Coral reefs are one of the world's most important ecosystems. They serve as a nursery for commercial fisheries, providing food for millions of people. They also buffer our coastlines, protecting our cities from high waves and storms. But coral reefs are under threat, and if nothing is done, overfishing and pollution could send this vital habitat into extinction. Scientists and governments are working to find a solution. But one little village in Mexico has found success. I haven't found any other reef that can compare with, with the reefs that you can see here in Cabo Pumo. You have your water? Yeah. I'll take you to Mexico's Cabo Pumo, one of the most successful marine protected areas in the world, to explore the reef and meet the people who saved it. It's a special treat for me to travel to the Sea of Cortez, also known as the Gulf of California. This is the place my grandfather, Jacques Cousteau, called the Aquarium of the World. When I heard the resurgence of the reef here, I knew I wanted to visit. This is one of the places he loved to dive. Cabo Pumo is off the southeastern coast of the Baja Peninsula in Mexico. It's not an easy place to find. It's about a two-hour drive from the airport in San Jose del Cabo, off a desert dirt road. Cabo Pulmo is almost completely off the grid. Solar energy powers the village, and there is no mobile phone service here. About 100 people live here, including around 80 members of the Castro family. The business here is tourism, mostly centered on diving and snorkeling. There are no hotels, no golf courses, and no marina. The boats dock on the sand. But the gem, the reason tourists travel to such a remote place, is the coral reef just offshore. It's hard to believe just three decades ago, this was a fishing village like any other, and the same Castros that now serve tourists were the fishermen. One of the Castro family who was instrumental in the change is Juan Castro. Hola, Juan. Felipe, encantado. He was born in Cabo Pulmo in 1945. Juan tells me his parents' generation never cared about the reef. Nosotros los ya una segunda generación comenzamos a pescar en esta zona. Eh, eh, tampoco nos importaba, no nos importaba qué hay ahí. Nosotros queríamos pescar todo lo que fuera posible. Era la tarea de nosotros diariamente. Juan also brought tourists out to fish, but one trip in the late 1970s was different. Pero esa ocasión llevé buzos con cámara, no llevaban nada, no tocaban nada, solamente película y fotografías. Yo tomé una máscara de uno de los clientes. Que quizás fue una cámara extra que llevaba. Me la puse y me tiré al agua con el, la embarcación agarrada de aquí. Fue una impresión, una impresión enorme para mí y me impresionó mucho mirar aquello tan precioso. Y dije yo, ahora entiendo por qué los clientes que traigo ahora nada más vienen a ver y, y me pagan bien solamente para ver. Pues como no hasta yo pagaría si esto está precioso. It was then that Juan realized he and Cabo Pulmo had to change. Voy a renunciar a la pesca y esto lo tengo que cuidar. A ver cómo le voy a hacer para convencer a la demás gente. No necesité palabras para ellos. Ellos solitos vieron que era un beneficio proteger el lugar y vivir del turismo. Juan's nephew, Mario Castro, owns one of the dive shops in Cabo Pulmo. And he remembers the reef before it was protected. We saw less fish 
and it was too hard to to fishing and when it didn't go too far then they use more gasoline and some days we come back with no have any fish he and other members of the Castro family worked with the Mexican government to protect the reef and we asked uh, about the option uh, we want to be a uh, Went to make a reserve here, Cabo Pulmo, and one day they say, okay, National Marine Park, Cabo Pulmo. That was 1995, more than 15 years after Juan took out his first divers. The National Marine Park was a no-take park. Fishing was no longer allowed. Juan's son Javier remembers how difficult it was for his family to keep the fishermen out of yeah, the newly protected dad, reef. You know, and, um, when when the, the park start, it was no park rangers, it was, I mean, uh, it was just us, the family. And we go there and the, the people come fishing. We tell, hey, please don't fish here. You know, it's a national park now and we want to protect this place. And we have a lot of problems with, with other people, you know, for that. And uh, it, was, it was hard for us, for everybody, because uh, like I say, it wasn't, it wasn't no enforced by, by the government. It was us doing it. And it's hard, you know, to tell the people, don't do this. You have to now go a little farther to, to, to fish. Or, and it was, it was hard at the beginning. Javier has been a dive master in Cabo Pulmo since the National Marine Park was founded. When I started diving, uh, well, the reef was, it was nice. It just, it was less fish, you know, it was a few fish. Um, and then uh, with the years, when you start protecting the reef, then the, the fishes are coming back. And um, in five years, it was a few more. And uh, you can see now, I mean, it's boom. <laughs> Lots of fish, it's, it's incredible. Also the, the migrations, you know, the mobulas, the manta rays, you can see thousands here in the season. And it's, it's incredible, you know, it's incredible. As the reputation of the success of the National Marine Park at Cabo Pulmo spread, the economic benefits to those living in Cabo Pulmo increased. Before we would eat just, just beans, just, just beans, you know, it's, it's example. Now we have a money to buy a rice, manteca, and tortilla. <laughs> it's, it's, we don't have a money in the bank, little, you know. But the best in this world is we have a, the, the reef for the next generation. And that next generation, like Mario's grandson, Jacob, hopes to continue to make its living from the reef. As the sun sets on this small diving town, another day of tourism comes to an end. Thanks to the efforts of their parents and grandparents, these children of Cabo Pulmo will be able to pass on the benefits of the coral reef to their children and grandchildren. And tomorrow, It'll be my turn to get in the water, to explore the reef for myself. It's morning in the small village of Cabo Pulmo in Mexico. And the shops are opening for business and I'm getting ready to meet a man who's been working on the coral reef at Cabo Pulmo for almost 20 years. This is Octavio Aburto, a research scientist at Scripps University of Oceanography in San Diego, California. He started working in Cabo Pulmo when he was a student at nearby La Paz International University. Octavio. How are you? I'm good, very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you too. And what have you found here at Cabo Pulmo? Why is this place so special? Well, there are two things very important. One, uh, Cabo Pumo is the only place in, or the only reef here in Baja California Sur that has a great coverage of hard corals. There are uh, several volcanic dikes, and on top of that dikes, there is a lot of hard corals. But the second thing, and probably the most important, is that the people from Cabo Pumo um, almost 17 years ago, decided to stop the fishing. Octavio tells me it took several years for the fish to return to the reef. In 1999, he was involved in a survey of fish in Cabo Pulmo National Marine Park. 
But after only four years of protection, the numbers weren't very different. So in 2009, we repeat the expedition that we did in 1999, from Cabo San Lucas all the way up to the upper Gulf, and again, we come and survey or, or, or sample or study the 11 reefs inside the National Park. And basically the difference, in summary, is that in just 10 years, Cabo Pumo has generated more than 460% of biomass from 1999 to 2009. So 460% biomass. biomass. Biomass meaning living creatures. In, exactly. In the, the total of living creatures on the reef. Basi basically, biomass represent the number of fish and their sizes. That is a staggering increase, 460%. Exactly. It's um, not, none other marine reserve that we know has reached that point. Octavio attributes the reef's success to the fact that this marine protected area is no take, meaning fishing is not allowed. According to the Pew Charitable Trusts, fewer than 1% of marine protected areas in the world are no take. So it seems to me that Cabo Pulmo is a perfect example of, of the need to balance environmental health, social health, and economic health, that, that, that true sustainability requires all of those three things and can be achieved. It just has to be done in a way that, that takes into consideration the long-term health of these ecosystems. I think this is the most important message that Cabo Pumo is sending to the rest of the world, that you can achieve the three things and not only, um, not only one. Octavio has been working with the Castro family in Cabo Pulmo since he started studying this area. I think they never imagined how uh, beautiful or how amazing uh, reefs they will create after st stopping the, the, the fishing. And now many, many divers from around the world, they want to come and see the spectacle of Cabo Pumo. That, let me tell you one story. I, I came to the Gulf of California inspired by some of your grandfather videos. And he said that the Gulf of California was the, or is the aquarium of, of the world. But in all my dives, I, uh, I didn't see what inspired him to, to put this name to the Gulf of California. Only until I started diving in Cabo Pumo. Since 2006, I understand maybe what he saw 30 or 40 years ago. With that kind of endorsement, I can't wait to see it for myself. We load into one of the Castro family's dive boats and head out to the reef. What can we expect on this reef? What is it called? What reef are we visiting? El Bajo. El Bajo. And, and what can we expect to see? Big groupers, uh -huh. a huge groups of grunts. It gets better and better. And the colors, you will see the colors because you, maybe we will see parrot fishes, green, really? green parrot fishes, yellow grunts, uh, leopard groupers, and also the corals. You have to, maybe you have to put attention to the tiny things as well because other characteristic of Cabo Pumo is the healthy of, of the healthiness of the coral. Octavio and I slip into our wetsuits, strap on our dive gear, and we're ready to go. Three, two, one. The reef is about 60 feet or 20 meters beneath the surface. And immediately, I see what Octavio was talking about. Huge schools of fish and dozens of colonies of coral. This hard coral can look like rocks, but these are actually tiny animals related to jellyfish and sea anemones. Their tentacles pull plankton into their stomachs and push away the waste. And as divers, we stay away from the coral. If I were to touch one of these colonies, I could kill it. And one of the reasons the coral is so vibrant here is because there are healthy populations of herbivore fish that eat underwater plants. They keep the algae and seaweed in check so the coral can thrive. And in overfished reefs, 
The lack of herbivore fish means the vegetation grows unchecked and can smother the coral, killing it. Once the ecosystem collapses, the surrounding fisheries continue to deteriorate. This domino effect is taking place all over the world, but not here. Cabo Pulmo National Marine Park is a marine protected area of 70 square kilometers. That could be one of the reasons why Cabo Pulmo is such a success. An entire ecosystem is protected here. So part of what Octavio is studying is how big a marine protected area needs to be to thrive. The benefits of Cabo Pulmo National Marine Park also extend outside the protected borders. After about 30 minutes, we head back to the surface. Octavio, you, you were not exaggerating. It was absolutely spectacular. I mean, enormous schools of jacks and grunts and giant grouper everywhere. I mean, they were scattered around like I've never, ever seen anywhere, anywhere in the world before. I mean, and I've been diving all over the world, and that was just magnificent. Cabo Pulmo National Marine Park definitely lives up to its reputation. The challenge for this community is to keep it protected, so it will be a model for other marine protected areas around the world. Cabo Pulmo National Marine Park is thriving. We saw thousands of fish and dozens of healthy coral communities. But on land, Cabo Pulmo is threatened by large-scale development. When I spoke to the Castro family, they told me some of their fears for their community and the reef. Our most concern is, is a big resource, you know, the big develops. Since they come, then it's going to be gone, you know. Nosotros miramos que son desarrollos que que van a acabar con esta zona residual porque las contaminaciones van a ser enormes, enormes contaminaciones. Sí, yo, yo no me aparto, yo no me aparto de que haya un desarrollo para que tenga más beneficio a la gente porque hay mucho desempleo. Pero, oigan, ¿por qué no hacen un desarrollo sustentable que no venga a hacer tanto daño? Eh, ¿Por qué no? We want to, to keep working the reef, to take a tourist to the reef to dive and the snorkeling. But if they, if they make the, continue the development, I think the people from Cabo Pulmo, we need to go to other area because we have a more work. Alejandro, yeah? But but there are many people working to help protect this area. Alejandro Gonzalez is the director of Cabo Pulmo National Marine Park. Currently we, we have five persons uh, working all day, uh, all year, uh, just to, to ensure the, this, uh, this beautiful place is still uh, recovering. Now. So we, we have uh, rangers, people that uh, always uh, is our face in, in, the, in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, some, some uh, boats to set for the surveillance and the monitoring. What is your biggest concern about any of these developments? Do you believe that they could have an impact on the health of the, the marine protected area? Depends of, the te of, of how, uh, how the people uh, uh, want to develop this area. No? Uh, there is no water here. Uh, all these systems are very fragile, so we need to be very, very careful uh, what, what, what accept or, or what do not accept. In June, the Mexican government finally canceled a $2 billion development called Cabo Cortes. It would have built around 30,000 hotel rooms, 
several golf courses, an airstrip, and a marina for almost 500 boats, all just 10 kilometers away from Cabo Pulmo National Marine Park. Environmental groups have been protesting the development in Mexico City, and Faye Crevache from Wild Coast was amongst them. 90% of the community, not only they don't want, they have been actively fighting against it with us. They have been our spokespeople, they have come to Mexico City. Faye has been working with the Castro family since 2010. Well, we came here and we just, you know, introduced ourselves and told them we wanted to help. And they were immediately open to us, you know, they had organized themselves in a, in a in an NGO, Amigos de Cabo Pulmo, and they just said, yeah, we will work with you. She vows to keep working to prevent large-scale developments from being built around Cabo Pulmo. The fabulous thing here is also that slowly, very slowly, we have built ecotourism, you know, a, a totally different tourism that in the world is growing, and we are very interested in growing it in Mexico because we have places like this to come and enjoy without impacting the area. The commitment to keep Cabo Pulmo National Marine Park pristine is part of what makes this place so special. And it surpasses its reputation for amazing diving. On our last dive, Mario's son David takes us to a shallow reef. We're lucky because this is the most spectacular of them all. Visibility is perfect and the fish and coral are amazingly abundant. This is why Cabo Pulmo needs so desperately to be protected. Words fail to describe how amazing that was. I've been diving all over the world since I was 11 years old and <laughs> certainly nowhere in this region of the world have I seen the abundance, beauty, and color of life as here at Cabo Pulmo, from the Mediterranean to the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, even other places I've been diving here in the Sea of Cortez, nothing even comes close to comparing to what beauty and majesty exists on those reefs. Traveling around and, and, and dealing in conservation, there's a lot of bad news these days. There's a lot of bad news about the decline of fisheries and coral reefs and the oceans. And I get frustrated because I think to myself how unfair it is that my children will never be able to experience the things that even I saw 20 years ago and certainly that my father and grandfather experienced all those decades ago. And yet when I come out to Cabo Pulmo and I see the potential, I see the hope that this place represents, the fact that we can come together as communities and restore nature and offer to our children and our posterity hope for the future, that we can restore we can revitalize the environment. It's, uh, it's these kind of moments that make it all worthwhile and just absolutely spectacular.